Hello friends. Today we come to a very interesting session on my hobbies. It's a light session in a way, but it's also quite an important session. You see, whenever you go for any interview, people will always talk to you about your hobbies. Why do they do that? We don't really understand at this stage, but we will understand by the time this session is over. Let me tell you a little bit about the session. First, we'll talk about the origin and the meaning of the term hobby. We'll also pick up a few examples of common hobbies like listening to music, playing cricket or traveling. And finally, we'll talk about the hobby question in the interview. Believe me, there is such a thing. So are you ready for the session? I hope you are. Then please get ready with your trainer Harsimrit as we go through this interesting but useful session. What do you think is the meaning of the word hobby? Why don't you say it with me? My hobby. Remember to use the aw sound. It's not your hobby. It's not your hobby. It's your hobby. The term hobby comes from the word hobby horse. Horse as in the ghoda. Now what do you think this hobby horse was? A hobby horse was a wooden toy made to be ridden like the real horse. It was the rocking horse. You may have seen a toy of this kind. Something made in the shape of a horse on which you can sit and maybe sway up and down. But of course, that horse can't actually go anywhere. Lakdi ka ghoda chal nahi sakta. Aap us pe baith sakte hain, jhul sakte hain. So, ise hi kehte the hobby horse. Aaj kal ye shabd use nahi hota hai. It's a word from old English. But from the word hobby horse, we have the term hobby. So, this expression leads to the term hobby. A hobby is a regular activity for fun sake. So, what is your hobby? Let's look at the definition of the term. A hobby is an interest or enjoyable activity that somebody pursues in his or her spare time. A hobby is a pastime that takes your mind off more routine or serious things. What do you do at the end of the day? After a tiring day's work, you pick up some sort of activity which will refresh you. That is your hobby. Studying is not your hobby, even if you are a very good student. How many of you are very good students? Okay, there are a lot of very good students here, but studying is not your hobby. It is your occupation. So, students... Students have the occupation of studying, obviously. Your hobby will be something away from your studies, even if you enjoy your studies or even if you're very good at your studies. Let's talk about some common hobbies. Drawing, singing, dancing, reading, handwork, handwork, hath ka kaam, kadhai, listening to music, traveling, chatting online, Surfing on the web, watching films, watching TV, playing games, writing. These are all hobbies. Now I have a little activity for you. Please look at your workbooks. There's a list of celebrities in the left column. In the right column, we have given a particular activity. Are these their hobbies? Let's take the first example, Sanya Mirza. Is playing tennis her hobby? You're right there. Playing tennis is not Sanya Mirza's hobby. Because Sanya Mirza is a professional tennis player. Now, do you get the point? I want you to attempt all the other questions on your own. 
Sushmita Sen, writing poetry. Sushmita Sen, writing poetry. Sachin Tendulkar, playing cricket. Sachin Tendulkar, playing cricket. Rahul Dravid, surfing on the net. Rahul Dravid, surfing on the net. Kareena Kapoor, acting. Kareena Kapoor, acting. And finally, John Abraham, riding bikes. John Abraham, riding bikes. Okay, let us discuss the answers. In our opinion, playing tennis is not Sanya Mirza's hobby. Writing poetry is Sushmita Sen's hobby. That is correct. Playing cricket is not Sachin Tendulkar's hobby. Surfing on the net is Rahul Dravid's hobby. John Abraham's hobby is driving bikes. And Karina Kapoor's hobby is not acting. I see we all keep up with our film news and our sports news. So we've got all the answers right. That's good. So a hobby is seldom a profession. It is normally removed from a profession. Now let's come to the common hobbies that we find all around us. Most people have a few common hobbies. The first is listening to music. All of us listen to music and most of us would describe listening to music as a hobby. But let's be more specific. Now when you say I like listening music, you are not grammatically correct. You should say I like listening to music. I like listening to music. Similarly, if you say I like to listen music, that is again grammatically incorrect. You should say, I like to listen to music. And finally, my hobby is to listen music is grammatically incorrect. It would be correct to say that my hobby is listening to music. I'll just repeat correct usage once more. I like listening to music. I like to listen to music. Or my hobby is listening to music. My hobby is listening to music. So don't make this error, please. It makes a really bad impression. Now, I would like you to consider the response in the following conversation. We'll just pretend that this is an interview situation. I'm an interviewer and my colleague who joins me is the interviewee. And I'd like you to listen to her response. What do you do in your free time? I listen to music. What kind of music do you like to listen to? Any kind of music. What kind of a music album would you buy? Slow songs, romantic songs, songs from old Hindi films. Let's analyze the response. Now, when my colleague said any kind of music, that is highly unspecific. What kind of music do you like to listen to? Any music. That's not answering the question at all. And when I do get an answer out of her, what was the answer? Slow songs, romantic songs, songs from old Hindi films. This shows a lack of vocabulary. It also amounts to poor expression. This person cannot speak very good English. On reflection, when we think about it, the speaker is searching for words to describe the kind of music he or she likes to listen to. So because of inadequate vocabulary, there is a breaking down effect on grammar. And finally, she is unable to speak proper sentences. She ended up speaking phrases. So what has happened here? When you start searching for the proper words, your language breaks down grammatically. So how should you talk about music? Let's be better prepared. It's a good idea to apply one out of 
two methods. The first method is genre-based. Now note this word please. G-E-N-R-E. -E, genre. What is a music genre? It's a particular style or category of music. We'll come to this. We'll discuss this far more in detail. The second method is artist-based. You can talk about two or three preferred singers. So anytime you talk about the kind of music you like, either discuss a particular genre or discuss two or three singers. Let's take a few examples of music genres. The first genre I'd like to mention is folk music. Now folk music is the music of a particular culture or tradition. For example, Punjabi folk music or Kashmiri folk music or Gujarati folk music. Now we do understand what folk music or folk dance is. Similarly, popular music. Popular music is accessible to the public. It's the kind of music which most people are exposed to. So in India, we may say that uh, songs from Hindi films are popular music. Devotional music, are, of course. Songs in praise of God, like bhajans. And finally, classical music is based on a set format. The rag. Alright, so uh, these are just a few examples of music genres. Folk music, popular music, devotional music, classical music. What do you do in your free time? I listen to music. What kind of music do you like to listen to? I like popular songs. I like popular music. I'm especially fond of the remixes of songs from old Hindi films. Bali Sagu's Churalia is one of my favorite remixes. Now I have a little puzzle for you. We are talking about a famous song. Lata Mangeshkar's voice is said to have brought tears to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru's eyes. How would you describe the song? A Mere Vatan Ke Logo Would you describe it as A. A Ghazal B. Devotional Music or C. A Patriotic Song I'll repeat the question. How would we describe the song A Mere Vatan Ke Logo? Is it a Ghazal? Is it Devotional Music? Or is it a patriotic song. You're right. It is indeed a patriotic song. A Mere Vatan Ke Logo praises the soldiers who died fighting for their homeland in 1962. Now we remember that we had a war with China in 1962. Similarly, in a genre based approach, we should talk about either a particular kind of music, there is a second approach which is based on your favorite singers. If your hobby is listening to music, you would have more than one favorite singer, right? So you could name any two or three of the singers you prefer to listen to and what kind of songs do they sing or what do they have in common? This can be the substance of what you say when people ask you to describe your favorite kind of music. What do you do in your free time? I'm fond of listening to music. What kind of music do you like to listen to? I like the songs of Remo Fernandez and Ila Arun. Both singers have a unique style of their own. I appreciate their originality. I have a second puzzle for you now. I am going to give you four names. These are all singers and I want you to pick out the odd singer here. Three of the four singers are known for their guzzles. One is a popular singer known for his hit songs. So I want you to identify the popular artist. The first is Jagjit Singh. The second Himesh Reshamiya. The third Pankajudas. And the fourth Talat Aziz. I'll repeat. Jagjit Singh, Himesh Reshamiya, Pankaj Udas or Talat Aziz. So identify the popular singer. I am sure all of you have this right. It is indeed Himesh Reshamiya. And I am sure all of you have listened to his songs. You have? That's good. 
Now I'd like to talk about the second common hobby which a lot of people seem to have around us. It is of course playing cricket. But when you talk about cricket, you tend to talk in very general terms. You need to be more specific. What kind of cricket do you play? Do you play ground or street cricket? In other words, do you play proper cricket in a cricket ground in the stadium or do you simply play on the street or on any piece of ground near your house? First of all, let's say it out loud. Cricket. That's good. Once more. Cricket. A lot of people tend to mispronounce the word as cricket or even kirkut. It's not that, it is cricket. That's good. What do you do in your free time? I play cricket. At what level? No, I just play with my friends. Just for fun, you know. I'm not serious about playing cricket. It's only my hobby. So you've heard that little conversation about a person who's not able to really describe the kind of cricket he likes to play. Now, um, let's try to understand the matter a little more in depth. They all play cricket. In a way, all of us play cricket, don't we? But there's a lot of difference between the kind of cricket we like to play. One may aspire to be a professional cricketer. A professional cricketer? like Virinder Sehwag or Sachin Tendulkar or Yuvrad Singh or Irfan Pathan. These are all professional cricketers. Many of us play competitive cricket at school or college level. You may represent your school or your college. We may learn to play the game in a professional setup like a stadium or an academy. A lot of us play cricket for leisure in a playground or on the street. Now that is the street cricket I've been talking about. Now, I'm sure all of us have played some or the other form of cricket. Personally, I did play cricket in class second or third and that used to be with my brothers and their friends. We used to play on the street outside the house. Okay, now I've got a little story for you. I want you to imagine yourself to be the character we'll be talking about. Put yourself in his shoes. In other words, put yourself into this person's situation and then answer the kind of questions I'm going to ask you. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Sandeep has been playing cricket since he was a kid. He used to play in the park with his friends. Then he started playing in the school ground. He made it to the school team as an opener and spin bowler. He also takes coaching at a cricket academy in the holidays. So let's have a short conversation with Sandeep. What do you do in your free time? I play cricket. At what level? I have been representing my school for the last two sessions. I have gone on to play junior cricket at the national level. We made it to the semi-finals of the Ranji Trophy. I opened the batting and also contributed as a spin bowler. Are you planning to be a professional cricketer? I do take some professional guidance at a cricket academy in the holidays, I will pursue my interest in the game as far as possible. Now we have a different case from Sandeep. This is the case of Anil. Anil has only played street cricket. Now we recall that Sandeep has been a little serious where the game is concerned. Anil is hardly serious. He plays cricket in the school ground, in the park and on the drive of his house. He does not play competitive cricket. He is only an amateur cricketer. What do you do in your free time? I play cricket. At what level? I am an amateur cricketer. I play street cricket with my friends. I am also very fond of watching cricket and have seen at least the highlights of every match played by India in the last two years. Who do you think is a better captain, Kumble or Dhoni? Kumble is better in the sense that he is a seasoned cricketer. But I don't think a comparison is really necessary. Dhoni is the captain of the future in all forms of the game. 
I think Kumble is facilitating that. Now repeat the word with me. Amateur. A M A T E U R. Amateur means for his own interest only. He's not really getting any benefit out of it. It's only for his own interest. All right, friends. So so far we've discussed listening to music and playing cricket. Now I would like to take up a third common hobby. Common in the sense that most people around me claim to have this hobby, traveling. I'd like you to say this with me again, traveling. Now we use the a sound in traveling. It's not traveling. It is traveling. Traveling should not merely be in the imagination. If traveling is indeed your hobby, and a lot of people may have this hobby, then you need to be actually traveling. It can't be in your mind. A lot of people do talk about traveling as a hobby, but they have hardly traveled. So listen to this little conversation. What are your hobbies? My hobbies are listening to music, playing cricket, and traveling. Tell me about the last trip you took. Trip? Describe the last place that you traveled to. I have not been outside Yamuna Nagar. What do you mean when you say that traveling is one of your hobbies? I mean, I want to travel some day. I hope you were all listening very carefully indeed. Let's keep in mind: a hobby is not a dream or an ambition. A hobby is a reality. It's what you do every day. It's not what you'd like to do, but unfortunately, you're not able to do. For any activity to qualify as a hobby, you've got to do it. All right? It's something you take up very often. Okay, let's really try to understand the word a little more deeper. To travel is to go on a journey or tour. It may be for work. It may be for leisure. But traveling as a hobby is different from mere traveling. Traveling as a hobby is connected to going on trips for leisure, not for work. So one should be a frequent traveler in this case. Now I'd like to have a little replay of the last conversation, in which we find that the person who claims that traveling is a hobby has hardly ever traveled, has never traveled, in fact. In this case, we are going to talk to a seasoned traveler. Listen very carefully. Tell me about the last trip you've taken. Last October, my family took a trip to Darjeeling. Darjeeling. Mm hmm. We spent a week in the hill station. We travelled by the Rajdhani Express from Delhi to Siliguri. Then we took a cab to the hill station, which is only two hours uphill. Wonderful! And where did you stay in Darjeeling? Oh uh, well, we stayed at a guest house in the town. Every morning, we would wake up early to see the famous sunrise in Darjeeling. We did our sightseeing. We also visited the village of Pashupati across the Nepal border. What all did you see in Darjeeling? Mm, the main attraction of Darjeeling is a glorious view of Kanchenjunga, the third highest mountain in the world. We travelled to the highest point in the area, Tiger Hill, to view the mountain at sunrise. As the first rays of light reach the peak, the ice cap turns pink in colour. The effects last for only a few minutes. That's amazing. I wish I could have seen it too. And other than the sunrise, what all did you do? Mm, apart from that, there is uh, the Himalayan Mountaineering Institute, which includes a museum. There is a zoo nearby as well. It is one of the few places in Asia where snow leopards breed in captivity. There are small lakes, monasteries, and of course, the toy train you may have seen in several Hindi films. Like Aradhana or Parinita? R right, right, right. You're okay. Right. I think I want to go to Darjeeling too. I hope you've all listened very carefully to the last conversation. Here we travel to a person who is indeed a traveller. And we heard all about her visit to Darjeeling. 
personally I wanted to catch the first train to Darjeeling and go and see the place for myself. At the beginning of the session, I talked about the hobby question in interviews. Now, why is it so important? You see, talking about your hobbies is one way to really find out what kind of a person you are. Your hobby is an expression of the kind of person you are. Your depth of interest in your hobby reveals your character traits. Try to understand this. If I claim that reading is my hobby, then I should be a well-read person. If I have told you myself that reading is my hobby, then you will simply try to find out whether I do indeed read, whether I take interest in reading, whether I have knowledge in the field of reading. And if I do, it shows great positive traits in me. If I don't, it does not bring out positive traits. It simply does not create a very good impression. The depth of interest you seem to take in your hobby reveals character traits. Let's remember that. It may be used to judge you as a prospective employee. So remember that. Your communication skills are also likely to be judged by the ease in which you talk about your hobbies. A hobby is a comfort zone. If reading is my hobby, I should be able to talk about reading comfortably. So it also becomes a zone of testing your comm skills. So I just like to recap today's session. Today we talked about what exactly a hobby means. We talked about its importance, especially in the interview context. We also discussed three common hobbies, listening to music, playing cricket and traveling. So I would like you to go home and tell everyone you meet all about your hobbies. Start practicing for the prospective interview right now. That's all for our session today. I'll meet you again very soon. Have a good day.